Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very powerful single board computer known as the Kados Edge 2. In this video, we're going to be testing out the latest version of Android. We'll be running some 4K video playback, some native Android games, and some emulation. We're going to go with some PSP, GameCube, Wii, and PS2. But if you're interested in seeing Linux running on this board, I have created a previous video. I'll leave a link for that in the description. But since that video, we've got some really awesome updates to Android, and I can tell you right now that this thing is an amazing performer. It's actually even beaten out the NVIDIA Shield. The Edge 2 we're going to be testing in this video is the highest end model and basically between the two we get more RAM and more storage but they will have the same exact CPU so you can expect the same performance. This one just happens to have 16 gigabytes of onboard RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. One of my favorite things about this board here is single cable operation mode. Some people call it alt mode. So basically with one of these USB type C ports here, we can get power in and video out at the same time. So all you'll need is a single cable going from your monitor that supports USB type C video in and PD charging out. We'll talk more about this in a second, but I did want to give you a quick rundown on the specs because they've definitely packed a lot into this little board here. Now we're just going with the basic performance specs. If you're interested in learning more, you can either check out my first video or head over to the website. Link will be in the description. But for the CPU, we've got the RK3588S. This is an octa-core ARM SOC. We've got four A76 cores at 2.25 gigahertz and four A55 cores at 1.8. So we do get really decent single and multi-core performance with this. But where this thing really shines is the GPU. When you compare it to other ARM-based single board computers on the market, this is miles ahead in the GPU department because it's using the Mali G610 MP4 up to 1 GHz. We've also got 16 GB of LPDDR4 RAM and 64 GB of internal storage. Now they also offer an 8 GB model and that comes with 32 GB of storage and I'm going to tell you right now that you will see the same performance out of the 8 GB model. Okay, so here it is. I've just connected this to my Aorus 4K gaming monitor. I mean, this thing is absolutely huge. I think it's a 43 inch and it does support USB type C video in or display over USB type C. And like I mentioned, one of my favorite things about this little board is single cable operation mode. So all I need to get this up and running on a monitor like this is a single USB type C cable. It's going to send power to the board and video back to the display. There's a few ways we can go about navigating the operating system here. You can always use a mouse, be it Bluetooth or connected over a USB dongle, or you could just straight up go with the controller. Here's an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth to the board, and we can navigate the full operating system. This build does have access to Google Play. There was nothing else that I needed to do, no hacking or anything like that. I just signed into one of my accounts, and we can go through and download our favorite apps. From the settings, we do have a Kados area, and this will allow us to adjust the LEDs, the fan speed, and we've also got a sleep or awake timer. But one thing I thought was pretty cool was uh, I go over here to display. At the very bottom, we've got HDMI. And from the resolution area, I was actually able to choose 4K 144 hertz. You know, that's the maximum this display supports, but it was really cool to see this option. Usually on these boards, we only see, you know, up to 4K 60. And I will admit, it's a little overkill for a single board computer like this, but you know, it's cool to have that option. Like I mentioned, from the Kados settings, we can mess around with the LEDs. I've got them off right now, but we've got a few different settings. We can do heartbeat, we can do breathe, turn them all on at the same time, or just leave it completely off. We've also got some cooling fan adjustment. We can go to automatic all the way up to level 4, and even at level 4, it's not continuously on. It's just more of an aggressive curve. Another thing we have here is the auto off and auto on timer. Haven't seen this before, but yeah, really awesome. If you need this to come on and go off at a certain time, you can set it directly from here. So obviously we're using the stock kind of tablet style Android launcher, but you can always install a third party launcher. One of my favorites for these larger displays is the TV launcher. I'm using the pro version. You can set this up, totally customize it. And I think it does work out really well for a larger display and a controller. 
First up, we've got some 4K video playback from YouTube, and with all of the new versions of YouTube, whether you get it from Play Store or use Vanced, we can always go to 4K with this. We can also turn on Stats for Nerds. It's up in the top left-hand corner. I know it's a bit hard to see, but this is a 4K 60fps video, and by the end, we only had three drop frames, and that was really from the initial loading. And Rockchip even claims that this will do 8K 60fps. Now, I don't have an 8K display, you know, I mean, 4K definitely looks good enough, and we're getting great performance. One thing I noticed, at least with the display I'm using right now, over USB Type-C I couldn't enable HDR, at least in YouTube, but over HDMI was not a problem at all. Now I wanted to test out a little bit of native Android gaming. Here we have Minecraft, not a super hard one to run, but it's a really great game and a lot of people want to know if this will run on these single board computers, and as you can see here, not a problem at all. I went into this, didn't change any of the settings, I'm just in creative mode right now, so I believe we're at 12 chunks with fancy graphics on. Checking out Diablo Immortal, definitely a little harder to run than Minecraft, and right now we've got a medium high mix. At all high, I did notice a few hiccups here and there, but with it set up like this, it's not bad, and to tell you the truth, it doesn't look much different, you know, going from medium to high here, and it's fully playable, even with a controller. Here's Asphalt 9. It's one of those games that's been on the market for quite a long time, so they've had a while to kind of optimize this for a bunch of different systems, and I mean, it does look really good on a larger display, and it runs flawlessly on this board. And the final game we're going to be testing here is Genshin Impact. So we still don't have native controller support for Android, but we can use a third-party mapper. Personally, I use Mantis Buddy, and basically what this allows us to do is just map a controller to touch points on screen so we can play these games that don't natively support controllers with a controller. It's not the best option, and hopefully we get controller support sometime down the road for this game. But this game is playable, and by the way, I'm set to 60fps medium from the settings. Not bad at all. So when it comes to native Android gaming, we're good to go. Basically, anything from the Play Store is going to run at full speed. But now it's time to jump over to some emulation and see how this thing performs. And first up, we've got PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And with a game like Burnout Legends, we could upscale more. I know for a fact that with the Tekken series, we can go up to 5x. I just left it at 3 because the next game here is kind of where it's going to max out at 3x. So the harder to run stuff, we're not going to be able to upscale as much, but 3x still looks really great with the God of War series. I also tested Midnight Club. It'll run at full speed, Vulcan back in, 3x resolution. And just keep in mind, if you want to do Dreamcast, you can even go up to 4K. You want to do some N64, you can go over 1080p with that. I really wanted to test the higher end stuff, so we're going to move over to some Wii and GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. Sonic Colors. Not the hardest Wii game to emulate, it only runs at 30 FPS without a hack on, and we're getting decent performance. With these GameCube and Wii games, I wasn't really able to upscale any, I'm kind of at the native resolution, so we're not getting, you know, Snapdragon Gen 8 performance, but I kind of didn't expect that. I mean, it's not bad, and we can play a ton of Wii and GameCube games. And with these first two Wii games, I didn't have to do any kind of tweaks with the emulator itself. And by the way, I'm using the official development version of Dolphin from their website. This isn't MMJ or anything like that. And I was actually able to run F-Zero GX, but this one here, we can't do Fire Field. It's going to fall right on its face with that harder to emulate course. And this still isn't perfect. I had to go into the emulator itself and overclock the GameCube CPU to 133% to get this kind of performance. But seeing this game here running this well on something other than a Snapdragon or one of the NVIDIA X1 chips is really impressive. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2. First game is Melty Blood, Actress Again. We're at 3x resolution, Vulcan back in. I also went through and tested a few other 2D fighting games. You're not going to have an issue running them, and there's tons of them for PS2. I also went through and tested Crash Bandicoot. We could go up to 4x with that, Vulcan back in. And uh, I also had to test one of my favorite games, Gran Turismo 4. Now this was a bit odd, I'm not sure if it's due to updates or what's going on, but usually on this chip I can run this at 3x resolution, but I was getting some major dips so I had to drop it down to 2.5x. 
Now I'm not complaining here because the game still looks great and it's playing really well. We're at 60 FPS with a PS2 game on a rock chip CPU. But, but the last game here, God of War 2 didn't fare so well. I dropped this down to 1x and we can still go down to 0.5x, but I don't think the GPU is really what's holding us back with this one. Now I do want to mention that I'm in safe mode with Ether SX2 and we don't have any kind of frame skip going on. There are a lot of hacks that we could use to make this run a little better, but I just kind of wanted to see what it did right out of the box. Overall, Android performance on the Kadas Edge 2 is absolutely amazing. I mean, this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen out of Android on a single board computer so far. And, you know, when it comes to Linux, I've done some testing with it. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. It also did a really great job, and it really comes down to this RK3588. We've got awesome CPU performance, and when it comes to the GPU, it's really powerful compared to some of the other ARM-based boards on the market right now. And these are only going to get more powerful over time, but right now I'd say this little chipset here is definitely the way to go. And by the way, I am using the higher end model of the Edge 2 with 16GB of RAM. It's way overkill for Android, and even if this board only had 4GB of RAM, we'd see the same exact performance. But right now I think they only sell an 8 and a 16 over on their website, but going with the 8, you're going to get the same exact performance that you saw in this video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely a great performer. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Edge 2, just let me know in the comments below. I've got my eye out for new operating systems. I'm really hoping that Manjaro comes natively over to the 3588 because having something like that on this board here would be absolutely amazing. If you want to learn more about the Gadas Edge 2, I'll leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.